Hello and welcome to this video. Electric Pages is here at Austin, Texas for Embedded World, the first Embedded World in this state. And I can say right, uh, I can say right now that it's been absolutely fantastic. And today we're at the Beacon Stand and I'm joined by Simon again. Thank you for having us. And, no in, case, and in case you remember some faces, we were actually on the Electric Maker show yep. uh, talking about the technology you guys have been developing. Was it this year? It was at Hardware Pioneers, I believe. And that was this year, wasn't it? That was this year. Yeah. And, so, and so now we're moving to, into the future a little bit. Yep. And it sounds like you've got some pretty interesting stuff coming out. So, for the audience, just very quickly uh, describe who you are, what you do, and what Bleacon is. Yeah, okay, so Simon Ford. Um, yeah, we're Bleacon and we're building uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, connectivity um, for IoT. Now, from our last conversation, if I remember correctly, we had a bit of a funny sort of back and forth about how essentially you're able to sort of like not hijack the Bluetooth mechanism to transmit internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as, the, as these uh, socks demonstrate, uh, yeah, the, the main, the main uh, thing we're doing is uh, uh, not using pairing. So Bluetooth historically has grown up in this consumer world where you've paired it because it's a personal device. Yeah. Um, but technically it's not limited to that. So we're, we're exploiting the fact you don't need to necessarily um, pair it. Mm. And that allows us to build something that feels more like a cellular network uh, or a LoRa network or something like that, but still using these really low cost Bluetooth low energy chips. So if I remember correctly, the, the, the idea was that you can use this non-pairing concept to sort of uh, provide internet access to devices, maybe whether it's a Bluetooth IoT device or some kind of low energy system, whatever it could be. It, exactly, yeah. So, so what we found is a lot of companies trying to use Bluetooth low energy to get data to a cloud backend or to you know, go and fetch data for firmware, things like that. Yeah. Um, but it's not really how it grew up. So yeah, a lot, a lot of our technology is about exploiting the um, uh, Bluetooth uh, technology, which is very prevalent, not just only the uh, the chips, the, the tiny uh, microcontroller chips, but actually the infrastructure that you can enable. So whether that's you know uh, uh, smartphones or, or things like that, uh, laptops or physical um, gateway devices, um, all of these can be turned into Bleacon hotspots. So a, a, micro, a Bluetooth microcontroller can um, yeah communicate directly with a, a cloud application. And so just to be crystal clear, if I remember correctly, you don't. It, it, it's, it's kind of hardware agnostic, isn't it? It's mostly in the software, so you don't really need to... Uh, is, is, that, is that correct? Or yeah, is this, exactly. Uh, so we, we've, we've built all the software and um, cloud technology to allow um, uh, the, this hardware to be used. Mm. And our customers tend to uh, look like uh, a product company that wants to build this into their own um, product. So they're the ones that are, are building the um, end hardware, yeah. So you talk, so you say about how it doesn't use pairing for mm -hmm. communication. So I'm guessing the way it kind of works is that there's a device, it announces it wants to send some data, and then some Bluetooth router will essentially pick that up and then transmit that to the uh, internet as needed. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So the security model is between the chip and the cloud, which um, which allows you to guarantee that the data you know gets to and from the device. So it doesn't matter who picks up and sends it because they're not going to be able to read it anyway. It's it, just kind of like they, they might see like an encrypted packet and all, exactly. they, they, they know it's got to go somewhere. Exactly. So all they do is just with the data. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that allows that sort of infrastructure to fade into the background. So, I mean, uh, historically, actually, things like apps or gateways yeah. have been quite a big component of um, someone uh, developing an application, but they tend to get caught up in the application itself, so yeah. they can't be generic. Right? No. Whereas you'd never think of a Wi Fi router or a cellular tower knowing about the application it's running. So it's, it's kind of taking those same uh, concepts but applying them to Bluetooth and then being able to um, take advantage of um, yeah the, those chips that are already available. Yeah. And so when it when it comes to like an application, like what I can sort of envision myself is like you might have a device, a, a low energy Bluetooth device, and as it's moving across, let's say through a large building, it's yep. sending out you know its signal. I want to send some data. Yeah. And you would have all these little uh, uh, sort of like Bluetooth routers all over the place. And any one of those picks it up, it can send it off. And I'm guessing that if you've got like exactly. certain messaging packets on that thing, you know if two messages come to the same server, you know that they were the same message because of some ID I take it or some kind of time Yeah, time yeah, I mean, the, so as you said, a lot of our, uh, or the technology is basically software and the service is running in the cloud and that all orchestrates all those hotspots. So we, we call these things hotspots. Yeah. Uh, the network has visibility of all of them. Yeah. If another one pops up, then that just becomes additional um, coverage capability for that network. Um, and you as the customer, you don't have to worry about any of that orchestration. In the, in the same way as if you take a mobile phone call, uh, it will go via some cell tower. Yeah. Um, but you don't know how or where, and actually if you move around, it might even migrate between the cell towers. So all of that technology is what we've been building, so someone can concentrate on the, you know, so, the fundamental application. Yeah. So does it, make it, it, does it make it kind of like UDP then, in the sense that it kind of sends packets out and then sort of, uh, sort of like, it sends it out and assumes it was picked up sort of thing. So like, 
No, so that's a it's a good that's a good question. I would say that um, the classical uh, use of uh, Bluetooth for beacons is more like that. So um, tracking beacons have historically just shouted. Yeah, and if something spots it then you know where it you know it exists right but, but but the device never knew that it was heard exactly yeah. um, so you actually you, you know you can build some systems out of that but they, they reach their limitations quite quickly in what you can guarantee so ours is more like the model where you know that a connection has been made oh and so the hotspot can sort of communicate back to the device saying, yeah. yes i've picked up your message and it's now been absolutely routed. yeah so what, what this gives you is an opportunity to do a beacon like use case mm. but for example a device might be saving up data when it gets the opportunity it can send it's that data and it knows that it's been received so then it can flush its buffers and and save more information oh that, that's okay that's actually really cool so so yeah. um yeah like i say it can save its data and it sends it when it finally picks up a suitable route in a certain yeah. distance so and, and we even have uh, cool things in the network like uh, the network actually provides things like time services mm. so for example all the devices can have a universal concept of time so Ooh, that's so a cool. device knows where that it is in the world but also mm. it knows what the time is so if you're if you're taking re readings or things like that when you send it in your database in the back end it all you know, Ooh, it all that comes sounds, and that could be useful for things like asset trackers. Then. So if you've got something yeah. that's moving across time zones, like say in a, in a cargo crate or something, yeah. when it suddenly picks up a signal, oh, I also know I'm in this time zone, so therefore I know exactly sort of what, what the local time is. Uh, yeah. so, so it doesn't have to try and track it itself. Yeah, and and, uh, and the other thing is, as it's going through a supply chain, it might be taking readings. You know, mm. you want to know if it's had an impact. Exactly. Uh, you, but, but you don't want to just know that it's had it. You want to know when it happened. When it had it. Yeah. Because that's actually whose fault it was, or something like that. Or you want to know when it went out of condition. Um, so a classic beacon, maybe when it got to the end of its, you know, entering a warehouse, might be able to say, I went out of range. But it couldn't tell you when or how or or anything like that. We, we could actually allow someone to upload a whole history of that device. Um, yeah, which is really yeah, quite powerful, yeah. And and so, is it is it possible for a device to be both sort of like, a, um, how do you sort of say, both a hotspot and a, I'm not sure what you call it really, an end device, I suppose. Is it possible to do so, both? So yeah, we have some quite interesting um, yeah use cases. Because the devices can communicate uh, data, um, they also can spot other other devices. Yeah, so we haven't announced some of those features yet, Ooh, but there's okay. some exciting things coming that maybe next time we talk, we so can uh, show you some of those that's things. That kind of sounds like you're going down the mesh route, maybe? No, it's not meshing. No, not it's really meshing. not meshing, no. But, um, but yeah, the, the fact that um, uh, Bleakin gives you the opportunity to send and receive, you know, substantial amounts of data. So how much are uh, we talking about in terms of bandwidth and stuff? Well, so um, you might be talking kilobytes a second, um, and obviously you can transmit for you know but, an amount of time. But kind of, like to be clear, like, like even though even though kilobytes doesn't sound like a lot, this is IoT devices that are sending like bytes of. Yeah, I mean the, the equivalent of a beacon might be it can send a few bytes, right? Exactly. Um, or so, a LoRa a LoRa device can send a, a few bytes, right? exactly. So, which is more than enough for most applications if it's like yeah. remote sensing or accelerometer readings and stuff. You don't need it to be megabytes per second. It's too no, much. No, but, but there is this interesting um, sweet spot uh, between the two, which is if you're just shouting your current status. You know that can often often be distilled to something very small, but maybe you don't want to just say your current status. Maybe you want to say what happened over the course of the day, um, and that is that is actually more data. Or maybe you wanted to update your ah, firmware or an algorithm. Or because like ten of those announcements may have never got anywhere, so there was exactly, no point yeah, sending it in the first place. So you wait for those, and then you can then make your exactly, uh, connection, yeah. and then all your energy is actually being collected. So it makes sense to then uh, to consume it in that moment. Yeah, and I think this is one of those things that's actually quite a unique property of Bluetooth. Mm. It's incredibly low power, yeah. but actually you can you can crank up the bandwidth and- Very, and, very quickly sort of. And yeah, and, and, do, and use some of the, uh, do some of these applications where maybe you are sending tens of kilobytes of data um, rather than just uh, bytes of data. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that actually opens up a whole, uh, you know, new opportunities for how you apply the architecture we've built, yeah. Fantastic. So we've got some demonstrations here, and I'd love you to go through and tell us exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah, sure. Should I, should I get Nick to do that? Would that be interesting to get someone else? No, 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 Okay, sure. All right, come well, on. come over then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is, I mean, this is a very simple uh, demonstration. This is our Bluetooth device here that we're representing. And then we've got three different um, example uh, Bleacon hotspots here. So the first is, um, in this case, it's an Android uh, tablet. Um, this one you can see is the sort of Android tablet that's actually used in, let's say, warehouses. But that, of course, could be an iOS, uh, you know, iPhone, a tablet or something like that. Um, we support um, laptops as well, so Mac OS and Windows laptops. Um, so this is the sort of thing you might find in a back office, um, people walking around site with Surface tablets, things like that on an industrial site or whatever. And then this is an example of a, a dedicated um, 
uh, gateway. So this is actually um, uh, the uplink in this case can be power over ethernet or it oh, can be cellular. Nice. So you plug this anywhere in the world and it will just, um, mm. again, provide coverage. Um, well, what I quite like is that if, is like if you have like office equipment like laptops, there's hotspots, and you've got something like this, which is sort of like your end device. Yeah. When the you know when someone walks past a machine in the in the, in, the, in the say like the back office where the warehouse is, their device suddenly synchronises with that exactly. laptop, and there's no need to install that extra infrastructure to make that happen. Exactly. Yeah. So so you can see here, this is a device, and as is beautifully demonstrated by our light up system here. Um, Depending on uh, where it is, its location, or what happens to be the case. In this case, okay, it's using this as the hotspot. So in that case, this Bluetooth device um, happened to use that as, uh, as its path um, to the network. But in this case, okay, it's going to use the, the laptop. So you can see over time, or in different situations, or as the Bluetooth or the um, hotspot devices move around, you can, you actually got a very flexible topology mm. um, that's very easy to deploy, but from, the architecture we've built, you can integrate it in exactly the same way. Yeah. So for, a for the design, the designer building the system, they don't have to think about this. They can just build it, it, it as if it was a cellular device. It really, or like I like the fact it really becomes hardware agnostic. It yes. really makes it well, well cross-platform. Essentially, it's like any as long as you've got a Bluetooth uh, uh, sort of a communication system and you've got the appropriate operating system to run the software on, it's going to act as either a hotspot or or a device, end device. Yeah, I think another thing that might be interesting as well, if people oh, aren't yes. familiar. So just as an example here, these are these are sort of some of the Bluetooth, I don't know if you can focus this, but it is so tiny. These are some of the Bluetooth devices um, that are readily available now. So th this here is a Nordic uh, uh, based Bluetooth microcontroller uh, in what's called a wafer scale package. Mm -hmm. So very, very tiny package you can see there, only a few millimeters square. That's the sort of device that not only is the Bluetooth radio, but also the microcontroller that can run the whole application. So you can see the sort of Compare that to a cellular modem or something like that. Uh, the, not only the size and the price, but the power it would use. Um, this this one here actually has um, the antenna and supporting crystals uh, built in as well. So within that package, that's everything needed to run a full uh, Bluetooth uh, system, including um, the antennas. Um, it's in single package here, and this is more classical module that perhaps you know you can compare that to a cellular module is is tiny, yeah. So this, and this is this is current generation, right? Um, obviously, uh, over over time, these are going to get even these are going to get even smaller. Yeah, 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 that's absolutely fantastic. Now, the demonstrations are really cool. Yeah. And what Lee can do can do is also very cool. Yeah. But it's not as cool as your announcement. Yeah. Okay. So yes. To, um, so today, it's really nice to be able to announce that um, uh, our seed round funding. So that was um, about 4.6 million of uh, funding um, for Bleacon, which is great. So that's allowing us to you know, build the team, build the product, support customers, and, and really um, yeah, grow the company. So um, this sort of technology is, is awesome, but if you can't bring it to market, you know, it's, a, it's just technology. So that, you know, this is really gonna um, help uh, us uh, build the company and work with um, early customers. So that's yeah, absolutely. we're very excited about that. Absolutely fantastic. So just before we wrap up this video, I've got one sure. more question for you. For the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Bleacon Solutions, what would you recommend that they do? Well, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, we have a website, bleacon.net, go to that. But um, the main thing is um, uh, uh, arrange to um, chat with us. It's really interesting to talk to uh, companies that are looking uh, to understand if this sort of technology um, uh, might be a fit. And what we found is by just discussing with them, it's very easy to uh, qualify in or out. Um, and some, we've had some really good relationships start that way, so yeah. Fantastic. Um, well, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you.